That said, it's my pleasure to be able to introduce Agnes Baker Pilgrim. Let me get to my spot in the program. You know, this afternoon, I heard Agnes, as I was sitting at her table, talking about the fact that um, she is the oldest elder in the Tikal, excuse me, make sure I get this right. What's the name of your tribe, Agnes? I'm the oldest living descendant of the Tikilme Indians that lived in Southern Oregon for 22,000 years. Imagine that. 22,000 years, and she is, yeah. She's the embodiment of that knowledge, Agnes Baker Pilgrim. I'm very glad to, to be able to say that. I told that to Martha Stewart when I cooked for her one time, and, and she said, can you at anybody attest to living in one place for 22,000 years? I was very honored when I did my research and found that out. And to this day, far as my tribal people know, I am the oldest living descendant of the Tequilma Indians. And my, my mother's dad, George Harney, was the first elected chief of the Confederated Tribes of Siletz. He was a great guy, a far seer, my mother said, and he also helped the Grand Round Tribe to be able to settle the people down because they were trying to run away and run back after that removal of the treaty that they had in, in 1853. And so they were such a stalwart people or I wouldn't be here. So I always commend the ancient ones that took all of those grandmothers and mothers and grandpas to make who I am. I always acknowledge those old ones and to thank them for making me who I am and assisting me from the unseen world. And I don't think we tap into that unseen world enough because I think it's just a breath away, a little hair away. And uh, so I get instructions from that that you won't believe. So uh, I'm, very, I'm very concerned uh, all the time, that do we listen when the Creator speaks? You know, when that voice speaks, I listen, whether it's coming to me in the dream time even, I listen. So being a voice for the voiceless touring the globe uh, for many years before I became this international person, teaching people you know, about water, that water could hear. And many of you today, let's see your hands who blessed the water today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I hope you continue to bless the water as you get up in the mornings every day. Make it a ritualistic thing. It'll make a difference in your body and your way you think and the way you, where your, where your body is constructed. I always say the insides of us looks like a hologram. And I say, hello, heart. How are you? You know, thank you for beating and keeping me alive even before I got out into this world. You've been beating a long time. And I pray that through the Creator's instructions that anything happens to you, now you know how to take care of it. So you do a good job. Thank you, heart. And so I go through my body that way and thanking all those parts of me. And so my daughter can tell you, I haven't had the flu or a, a cold or something for six, seven years now. Better knock on wood and uh, thank the Creator for taking care of me because I drink my water every day. I drink lots of water. And uh, so I think that if you continue to talk to the water, bless the water, whatever you're using it for, or showering, or in the tub, or flushing a toilet, washing your hands, cooking. You know, all those places that you use water. One person can use maybe 100 gallons a day. Four people, 400 gallons, that's a lot of water. Already down in Haiti, that they had that disaster, they're still, they're still crying out for good water. Over a year ago. And just think of the people in Japan. Many of those over there, other thousands, not having water. To me, that's frightening. You know, we're lucky so far. We're lucky. But many places, like Los Angeles, sits on these 
these volcanoes, Utah, New York. You know, I always talk to blow my feet. You know, don't be erupting. You don't need to do that in destroying life. They took me to Hawaii several years ago to bless the heiaus, the sacred grounds over there. And I went to a, up to a, a, a volcano and uh, Many people were behind me, and I jumped over this fence. You're not supposed to do that. You know, it's dangerous out there. And I said to these Indian guides, I said, you know, I was instructed to put this medicine out there into that big cavity, and I can't throw it from here. So over the fence I went. My doctor's son and them are screaming at me, you get back here. I can't throw this from way back there. And so I'm over there at the edge looking at this pulsing stuff out there and shoots of sulfur coming up, talking to it and putting this medicine down and talking to that volcano. You don't have to be overflowing and getting angry. And if you do, you make a good path. Don't be taking lives with you. You don't need to do that. So I'm just standing there hooping at it. And so far, through the creator's help, it hasn't overflowed. And so I always remember to thank it for it to stay still and not harm the people. And so, again, I don't know whether you do it or not, sometimes I'm always talking to the cloud people. I've got things to do down here. You've got to move over a little bit. You know, I've been up to Clockwood Sound, Tofino, B.C., blessing the most beautiful cedar trees I ever saw in my life, and it was stormy. And so I made everybody get out of the a boat of the pits of Indians. Get up here on the stock and let's all pray. Let's talk to the cloud people. Move over a little bit. You don't have to get us wet right now. Wait till we get this done, then you can come down. And so we did, and pretty soon it stopped. And so we went on and went on to bless the island that a woman had bought and brought back to the Opitsit Indians. They wanted me to go back over there and bless that land because that's where they did their salmon ceremony. And an eagle was flying over the top of our head. And, and finally it went. And then we had some tea and crumpets and stuff for lunch. And then we got the blessing done, got back into the boat, got back to the dock, went up the hill. There's people there that can tell you this. Went up the hill, shut the door, and here come the rain again. So you could talk to the cloud people, you know, at times like that. Many beautiful things and beautiful stories that I've had to talk to him to do that. The Creator has blessed me. I've fought this journey for many, many years. I didn't want to be this spiritual person. I, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't worthy. I can't do it. Give it to somebody else. And it went on and on like that. Finally, I decided maybe I better do it. And I did. And I picked up speed. Do you think I retired? I need roller skates. And and I, and I travel a lot, but the Creator's always with me, always helping me, no matter what happens. And I feel very grateful, because I'm not working every day towards some God that's already here. And I really feel that I'll stay there as long as I speak truth and walk my talk. And I believe, just like I was telling Stan, the, the, the beloved Creator, Mother God, Father God, you know, created us in that likeness. So inside of every man, there's a woman, and every, every woman, there's this man. It needs to balance. And so we need to look at that. And so I feel today that we're going to have a prayer, and we're going to have my boy over here, Washu, Indian Art George, because that balance, I'll pray, the masculine prayer will come. Give us that balance. Something prompted me and asked him. He said he would do that. And I want to thank you, honey. And so let us stand and talk to our beloved and thank him for just being able to stand here on our Mother Earth's face and take up this little bitty spot. Thank you for just taking, having another breath. Thank you for bringing you here safety, for safe and, and, and taking us home safe. Thank him, there's so much we can thank him for. Each one of you got so many gifts and it's beautiful how he has strung his gifts out amongst us. And so I pray your journey along from this moment that it will be great that you will have peace in your heart to give away to people. You'll have in words of encouragement. You can have your hand out to help somebody to stand. Some good thing to say to somebody, meet a new stranger, 
help that person, whatever is needed from you. Let us carry that peace at this moment so that we can give it to somebody else as we journey, okay? Dearly beloved, grandfather, creator of the great mystery, great spirit, God, how blessed you are to be in our midst and walking amongst us and in our hearts. Grandfather, thank you for the image that you give us. Thank you for that we can call to you day or night and say two little words, help me. And you're there and you can lift us over the hard places. And grandfather, we thank you for that. We thank you for the encouragement that you give us. We thank you for the strength for each step we take. Grandfather, that we all have a purpose on this land. And thank you for the beauty that you surrounded us with. May we continue to keep it, Grandfather, for the seven generations ahead, the unborn, so that they can walk in the beauty that we walk in here today. Help us to pray and take care of our waters all over the globe, Grandfather. The waters needs our prayer so badly. We want to live, Grandfather, so we need the water, the good water. And Grandfather, help us to journey and carry these messages and let it ripple out into the community. Let it ripple out to our friends and family that we are concerned of our Earth Mother. And Grandfather, we thank you for all the gifts that you have given us. We thank you for this thing we call a brain, that nobody runs it but us. And so we pray that you continue to speak to us in the dream time and help us with our visions and help us to be far seers and help us to be good parents and grandparents. Help us to be good children, Grandfather, and help and strengthen us as we journey to carry on our culture and our traditions, Grandfather. You're giving us a heavy load, and we know that it's the little people that own the world, Grandfather, and we're not doing a very good job taking care of it for them either. So help us to be able to see what more we can do to help, Grandfather, we pray. Hear our message, hear our love in our hearts to you tonight, Grandfather. Touch your children down here, pity us. Thank you for our elders here today and our little people, Grandfather, and our givers of life. We thank you for all of those that has brought us together in this place, making us one family. We're all connected, Grandfather. And to thank you for hearing our prayers here tonight. Aho, aho, aho. Um, I want to say to you before I say this prayer is uh, I want to say to all of the men out here that the feminine side of our lives are uh, it's getting stronger in this in this world mm -hmm. and so this men need to know that we were the seers and the ones that helped to to be good men so that we can help the women to be as strong as they can be so the family can go where we need to go. So when I look around and I see all the men here, know that we're 75% water, like Grandma says, and there's water in the air, and there's water when we wash up and when we drink, and everywhere we go there's water, but it's from around the world. It's for thousands of years this water's been here. The water in us is thousands of years old. So all we have to do is believe in it and, and listen to it and listen to the spirits and we'll be the people we're supposed to be in balance, male and female, then we'll get the messages that each one of us have to bring here to earth so that we all can live together. And so with the original indigenous and the foreign indigenous here together, I wanna to say welcome home. Welcome home. Uh, Migalam Shemwe Baba Ama El Digoi Kelsugaka Mangao Ngawa Hutti we Mamitle Teotesh Teotish. Um thank you for grandmother for the work she does, watch over her, watch over all of the people here and, and help them to see from within so that we can start to do the things that on the are on the outside of us. Pray for us all in all the directions. Grandfather and grandmother, thank you. Oh. Uh -huh. Thank you.